the mess D'Souza. And the mess has been, um, and I do mean has been, has been having to respond to people's uh, critiques of his movie more, uh, more than any other like political documentary I've ever seen. Like, no one is buying this. It's amazing. Yes, Nails by Sherry reminding everyone the Illinois primary is tomorrow. If you're in the Illinois area, if you are an Illinoisian, if you're a Chicagoan, I love you. Vote. Just, you know, if you don't give a shit, pretend you do for a little while. Again. But um, this, oh boy. So one of the things... That uh, there's there's a lot of issues, obviously, with the movie. Uh, uh, you know, obviously, he asked me for my three biggest criticisms. I said the premise, the evidence, and the conclusion. I think that sums it up. But for the mess D'Souza, um, he's having and not only this is a new one to me. I've never seen this before. He's been getting like emails and stuff, but apparently now he's taking recorded calls or something. I was setting this up literally to get levels on audio, and I was, uh, I, I gotta say, I was kind of stunned that it wasn't just him reading this one. Who cleans up after 2,000 mules? The mess de Souza. Anyway, so this is how to, <laughs> I love this one. How, how to explain what a tremendous loser Trump was during the election. No, how to explain that Trump was the biggest loser in America. No, that's not what it says. It says, how to explain the apparent absence of down-ballot fraud in 2,000 mules. Um, or you mean down-ballot losers? Because, again, Republicans picked up House seats during that race. Everybody who's in elected office, the vast majority of them, especially in these states, uh, those folks got either elected or reelected or something. They, they've still got their job. How did that happen? Well, apparently this is this is a quickie, so he's going to answer this for us. I'm I'm fascinated. I can't wait to find out. By the way, uh, if you like the show, uh, like it and subscribe to it and thumbs up it and all those kind of things. If you hate it, like it and subscribe to it and thumbs down it. And write something awful in the comments that isn't that stuff that won't get you broomed. Obviously, we want it to stick around. You can be rude, make make one of those comments. These are my current favorite. Make one of those comments that calls me a C list out of work actor, but at the same time says A list actors are adrenochrome snorting, baby eating, cannibal sex witches or something. So I, I it's good. It helps me because I don't know whether I should be ashamed or proud you know what i mean it's a it's a, it's an emotional it's an emotional horseback ride for me as my grandfather said and those kind of comments will pearl your teeth curl your hair and give you tongue a sleigh ride all right um i'm paraphrasing of course now yeah 2000 yes 2000 laptops that's the next movie all right Whew. <laughs> here we go i have uh all right let's go to our first question let's let's do it what is the bell Hey, Dinesh, so two quick questions. The first one, you said Republicans did pretty well in, in, in 2020. Also, uh, since he's not posting the whole thing like uh, like an asshole. Sorry, I'm moving the audio a little bit. Um, he's not explaining that they did a whole episode where people left messages, I guess. Um, uh, but it, tr it was Trump that lost. So my question is, you know, if those were illegal ballots, uh, you know, why do you think, you know, Republicans did well? I mean, why not go all out and just uh, make them all, you know, Democrat ballots uh, and then just make it more sweeping? Uh, so that, that that's kind of a question I have is why only Trump and, you know, people would vote for Republicans otherwise. Yeah, that that's a big problem. Uh, also, uh, for the record, if I may, um, and I know that a bunch of you guys are. Hold on one second. I'm going to move myself over a touch. Hi, Dinesh. Hello. Hi, Dinesh. Um, that, uh, <laughs> we, um, not only that, you know, well, let's see what you guys think chat wise. What do you think his answer is going to be? I'm kind of going with if they did all of that, the, it would be too overt 
and they wouldn't get away with it because it would look it would be so clearly um you know so so uh, clearly fraudulent right that's that's my theory that's where i think he's going to go um uh the other one is is that i guess down ballot democrats uh didn't pay for it yes Besides, it didn't happen, Hikira. That's not fair. We have to. I want to know what his asshole, what this asshole thinks. From your your point. Oh yes, uh, Jan six hearing tomorrow. Very excited. It was going to be a month, and now obviously something's up. Hallie looks like the mouse from Cinderella. It's an excellent point. I want to hear his reasoning too, because that yeah. Answer is I'm an idiot. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, secondly, regarding those two oh, women, two of them. women that were, or those two people, I think they're women, uh, that were um, arrested in Yuma, Arizona. They're arrested for trafficking. So it looks like uh, upon reading it, uh, they just collected them illegally and deposited them in a Dropbox. Uh, I don't think there was anything that, that uh, alluded to multiple Dropboxes, you know, 20, 30, 40 a night or anything like that. Uh, so, so far, um, it's great. They also busted a woman in Texas uh, for doing it local race again this happens when people are like running themselves or a friend is doing it so they're just trying to clamor for these like local seats uh that they were caught but but not about nothing about multiple uh drop boxes so again that the volume of fraud doesn't appear to be there uh, at least in those two cases thank you see yeah so pre-recorded so the dude can't butt in if i uh, if i may before we even get into this, this is the laziest form of response you can possibly do. This is this is the biggest dick move because you, there's no follow up, and he gets to pick which ones. Yeah, these are both really good questions and already of a higher caliber than some of the so-called fact check uh, issues that are raised that I've been answering on the podcast. That's in all fairness. So he hasn't been answering mine at all. <laughs> you can't even watch it. I did the whole movie. I did everything. I didn't pick one thing. I was like, it, it's a, it's rain and bullshit. Hallelujah. It's rain and turds. All right. Let me deal with them one by one on the issue of the down ballots. Mm hmm. Uh, we raise it in the movie. Uh, in fact, I myself say that it is an argument against fraud that Trump lost, but down ballot Republicans did pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so that is put out there for. Yes, yes, we know this. You have to say it because everybody's thinking it. Or uh, people to recognize um, in act one in the very opening um, minutes. And then we ignore it. It's of the movie. Now, sometimes when you have a theory, you're able to sort of go back and apply it to puzzles that were there at the beginning and, and it immediately resolves them. But at other times, you have a theory that doesn't... That reality refuses to back up. ...and speak to the issue. And I think this is a case where... What? Uh, is he arguing straight up irrelevancy? The argument of 2,000 mules or the evidence of 2,000 mules doesn't really resolve how that anomaly occurred. And here's what I mean. We know what you mean. You just don't, you don't think it's a problem worth addressing. You bring it up and then you piss it off. You you know when you could have done it? You know when you could have addressed it or gone back if you had any evidence you wanted? It, oh, fucking hell. If you, if you, you could have used one of the multiple moments that you recut that asshole in the backpack dropping shit off that was the multiple angles of the same moment that wasted a shit ton of time. It is possible that the altered ballots or the fraudulent ballots were voted Democratic all the way down. They weren't just votes for uh, Biden, uh, but they were votes straight down the ticket for Democrats. Then they would have won in the volume necessary. The idea, uh, okay, I, I think I, I get a feeling where he's going. This is, um, but, Democrats voted for Biden, but not the other Democrats, and it balanced it out. Uh, and um, and so even though there was fraud to that degree, uh -huh. the degree of the cheating shown in the movie. Uh, no, there was no cheating shown in the movie. In Trump's case, the fraud was enough to defeat Trump. So Trump lost Georgia. Uh, but the fraud was not enough 
to change the down ballot outcome. So some other Republicans in places like Arizona, Georgia, still did pretty well. Now, obviously, we know in the runoffs there was a, a bad outcome for Republicans, but that was a separate election. So the Right, but it was using the exact same machinery and all that kind of stuff. What do you think, that they won by a similar margin, but the Chinese and the Spanish satellites had just given up at that point? The point I'm trying to say is that... I, we, is that it's not your problem. That without retrieving the ballot. If we could retrieve the ballots, we could answer this question decisively, right? Because if we could retrieve the ballots, we, we wouldn't have a private uh, ballot system in this country. And you could just sick the Proud Boys on groups of people who are going to vote or or steal their mail before an election on purpose and just shred people's shit. And, and if you only get caught part of the time, that, you know, you could make an impact. You could look at them and say, hey, here's a ballot where apparently this person, um, this ballot delivered by a mule only has a vote at the presidential level, let's say Biden over Trump, but no other votes are voted. Which is great if there are no recounts on any other race except president. Because then nobody's going to bother to check if there were just a bunch of fucking blank ballots stacked up that just Biden or Trump just that's all they did was top line and they blew off everything else just in case because they were only trying to wait it one direction. He does realize there have been recounts on other races during this during 2020. And then we would know that the cheating occurred only at the presidential level. And by the way, that's not inconceivable. It's not inconceivable. Yes, it is. It's fucking ridiculous. Well, the Democrats go, listen, Trump is the Nazi. Trump is Hitler. We can't possibly take the risk. But the rest of these Andy Biggs and, and Ron, you know, Johnson, MTG, all this, they're lovely. Yeah, that's that's what Democrats did. Uh, yeah, they they the, the important thing was getting rid of Trump. Uh, Gosar, though, gets to keep his seat. Now, the rest of it is too complex and it's, the operation becomes too complex. We would then ultimately have to deal with all the votes, not simply for candidates down ballot, but also perhaps referendums and other, uh -huh. other types of things that appear. Right. And when they did recounts about any of these close, close referendums, guess what? They didn't have a sh shit ton of like, Jesus, people only voted for Biden. There's nothing else on this ballot on the ballot. We don't want to deal with any of that. We're simply going to focus. Yes, that's the thing about Democratic voter fraud. It's just so, you know, lazy. They, they want to phone it in. It's on the presidential race. That would not be. There's Trump derangement syndrome, but I wouldn't say that there's Republican derangement syndrome. So Jesus Christ. All you're doing is making the case for why a lot of Republicans this round voted for Trump and still voted for the Republicans on the ticket. Oh, you can see why the Democrats might have targeted Trump. But I yeah, might. Didn't. I emphasize the word might because we don't know. Right, you don't know. So, all right, why are we even watching any of your shit? You don't know. You don't know. Your movie doesn't prove shit. Your, your argument is garbage. It's a ridiculous spackle. Let's turn for a moment to Yuma. <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, now, Yuma is a very small area. Let's remember that the bulk of the research focused in 2000 Mules is in large cities, Atlanta, Phoenix, mm -hmm. Milwaukee, Detroit, Philadelphia. Yes, and it comes uh, up with fuck all, I think is the technical term. <coughs> You're dealing with- oh, Okay, and he's got COVID too. Large areas, many drop boxes, and sometimes drop. And yet, large areas, lots of security cameras, many drop boxes, and no footage of any of the mules you have in these things going to more than one, ever. There's, uh, they've got a couple of ones that they've got cameras on, but never a crisscross in two districts in the whole fucking country. In all the footage they have, oh, don't get me started. Boxes. We're going to redo the whole fucking movie again. Strewn across multiple counties. Yeah, and you'd think there'd be a, a a camera on one of them you could get the rights to, apparently. But when you did, the problem is, here's what I think. And let, the, let's just put a pin in this shit for a second. I guarantee you that True the Vote and this fucker 
both got footage of multiple drop boxes in an area where they allege, according to their info, that these people went to because of their geolocation data. And yet when they checked the footage, the person never stopped. They went by the box, but they never stopped there. They just, it was a stop sign near the building. They were within 30 feet of the fucking thing, but they never got out of their car. They never stopped. There's no footage of them doing anything. So they can't show you that. They have to assume, show you they were nearby there because it's their neighborhood and they were near a bunch of the shit. But if they showed you the footage of that moment, it would show that that person's car drove right by the fucking thing and it would, and the whole movie would eat a bag of dicks. It would just fall apart. That's why it's not that they don't have footage of these drop boxes at the time when these people were supposedly there. It's that they do. That's the essence. And, and here's the thing, more so than this asshole answering questions like this about, well, well, how come you don't have? My question is, give me the footage. I would like to see, because I, I would like to see your geolocation data and then we want to scan that geolocation data, the timing on it, according to them, because it shows them going by, but I, they never list like the time of day and all that kind of shit. I want to see the footage of the other drop boxes on those moments because it's there a very specific reason why they're not showing it. Damn, I never thought of it this way. That perspective makes this movie extraordinarily deceitful. Yeah, that's the point. They do have footage of multiple spots, but they don't have any footage of anybody going to two spots, which means they are lying about the positioning of it. And it means they have footage that lines up with the geotagging data, but it doesn't show the people going to them or to even the activist centers. So they, it, and if they show the timing of it, here's, here it is when they went by that one place and it doesn't show them doing it again. It's horse shit. It just, the whole movie falls apart. They have footage that's exculpatory to their entire argument. And this is all a smoke screen just to avoid showing it. In Georgia, for example, Gwinnett County, Cobb County, DeKalb County, Fulton County. So you're, it's possible to get in your car and go over three or four counties, you know, hitting various drop boxes. Now, and yet, Yuma is not like that. In fact, Yuma would not normally have even been in the study. The reason it was included is that True the Vote had done some work there. There was a case in Yuma. Uh, there was a woman who cooperated with the authorities who mm -hmm. agreed to be interviewed by Greg. So she's in the movie. But in that area of Yuma, there are only two drop boxes. So yes, it's a small operation. The, the, we're not talking about mules going to um, multiple drop boxes. And You're not even showing them going to both of them. There's not footage of them going to one, much less two. And again, this was a local election. Rules are a lot more slipshod in those areas about local elections. In fact, in these cases, these two women, they're more accurately described as mule drivers instead of mules themselves because they're not going on these mailman style routes. Their job is to sort of- No one is. Collect and collate these fraudulent votes and then go make a single drop. So it's a little bit of a different situation. In a local race. Situation, but nevertheless relevant to paid ballot trafficking. These are women who were in fact compensated as were people collecting those ballots. Uh, but the operation in Yuma is uh, of a different magnitude. Uh-huh, meaning it would do nothing to affect the outcome and it's easily discoverable. Uh, that how do you think Dinesh believes this crap? I th uh, on, a, on a certain level, um, I no. No, I don't. I think he believes in the power of the grift, and so he keeps selling it. In the same way that, like, a, you're a, you're, you work at a Ford dealership, but you drive a Mercedes, and all day long... You're talking up these Fords, man. These Fords are something else, you know, and your boss paid for the Fords and they're all like, that's, yeah, mule team drivers. Don't get me started, Elizabeth. That, that's what it, I, I think he believes in the grift. And the operations described in the other cities. Oh, that's it. 
And he didn't even answer the second fucking question. Uh, I mean, other than trafficking, these are women who were in fact compensated as were people. Okay, hold on. Let's let's take a look at what he, Yuma ballot trafficking. Uh, it says June second, twenty announcing. Uh, this let's see, this is the one. I'm just scheduled back a court June 30. Okay, this is this is the uh, Arizona AG's page on this Yuma, Yuma County thing. This is from June of this year. Yuma County Attorney General Mark Bromovich uh, announced that Guillermo Fuentes of San Luis pleaded guilty on Thursday to one count of ballot abuse, a Class Six felony for her role in an August 2020 primary election ballot harvesting scheme. Again, this is primaries. None of this is national. They get busted in a primary. You think this is going to fly in a general? Where early ballots from other voters were collected and deposited into a ballot box on primary election day. In December 2020, Fuentes and Alma Juarez of St. San Luis uh, were both indicted for one count each of ballot abuse also known as ballot harvesting in March 2022, Juarez entered a guilty plea to a ballot abuse. Uh, Arizona law only provides for a family member, household member, or caregiver of the voter to collect voted or unvoted early ballots from another person. Under Arizona law, ballot harvesting is a class six felony. Fuentes admitted that she knowingly collected ballots from another person and those early ballots belong to individuals for whom I am not a family member, household member, or caregiver. Fuentes further admitted that the early ballots were later provided to Alma Juarez. Fuentes is scheduled to be back in court uh, on June 30th, 2022. The investigation is conducted. Okay, so let's let's look at the backstory on this fucking story. This is... Um, uh, this. Okay, so here's June 1st. This is the Channel 12 News. Here we go. Records shed light on suspected ballot harvester in Yuma, Yuma County. Records obtained by the Associated Press reveal how a former mayor of San Luis allegedly collected ballots during the 2020 primary election. It was for her election. An Arizona woman indicted in 2020 on accusations of illegally collecting ballots apparently ran a sophisticated operation using her status as a well-known Democratic operative in the border city of San Luis to persuade voters to let her gather and in some cases fill out their ballots, according to records obtained by the Associated Press. Uh, Germina Fuentes, 66, and a second woman were indicted in December of 2020. Uh, by the way, in December of 2020, like right fucking away, from earlier that year, from it was from the spring of 2020. So there were eyeballs out during this anyways. This case was being looked into. Uh, for ballot abuse, practice known as commonly ballot, har ballot harvesting that was made illegal under a 2016 state law. Additional charges of conspiracy forgery and additional ballot abuse were charged and added last October. They took them down. She voted, uh, she pled guilty and uh, to one check one term of, ba of ballot harvesting, essentially. Fuente is a former San Luis mayor who serves as an elected board member of the Gadsden Elementary School District in San Luis, has a Thursday court date. Fuente is accused of collecting ballots during the 2020 primary election in violation of the law that only allows a caregiver or family. Her attorney, Ann Chapman, has responded, Republicans have rallied around the possibility of widespread voting fraud. There is no sign, um, sorry, uh, they're pointed to charges against Fuentes as part of a broader pattern in battleground states. There's no sign uh, of that in the investigation records, though. They were obtained through a public records request from the Arizona Attorney General's office that was first made in February 2021, but was denied. The AP sent a request in late October. The records show that fewer than a dozen ballots could be linked to Fuentes. Not enough to make a difference in all but the tightest of close local races. It is the only case ever brought by the Attorney General under the 2016 law, which was upheld by the U.S. Supreme Court. Investigators said it appears she used her position as a powerful figure in the heavily Mexican-American community to get people to give her and, her and others their ballots to return to the polls. Alleged illegal ballot collection by Fuentes and her co-defendant happened in plain sight outside a cultural center in San Luis on the day of the primary election. The report show Fuentes was at, at a card table set up by supporters of the state uh, slate of city council candidates and was spotted with several mail ballot envelopes. 
pulling out the ballots and in some cases marking them. The ballots were taken inside the cultural center and deposited into a ballot box. Like this is the most ham handed pile of shit. And it's not even muling. Like this is, this is the stupid part of this. Oh my fucking God. This First of all, it was in a primary election for which she had skin in the game. She was a former mayor. She was on the board. She was trying to help other people in her local thing get elected. Fuck her. It's garbage and it's stupid. But she wasn't picking up. She wasn't ballot harvesting. She she harvested from a card table and brought them in the building. Ah. Uh. Yeah, she got caught right away. She was doing it out in the open. She wasn't paid to do this. This was her own, this is like run-of-the-mill local bullshit. The ballots were then taken inside the cultural center and Brent, she, they fucking gave them to her. She's like, you can give me your ballot and I'll drop it off or I can fill it out for you. And that's it. It was videotaped by a write-in candidate who called the Yuma County Sheriff. <laughs> fucking doing it out in the open. Why isn't someone doing a documentary about this? Oh, they were on their fucking phone. An investigation was launched that day and about 50 ballots checked for fingerprints, which were inconclusive. The investigation was taken over by the attorney general's office within days with investigators collaborating with the sheriff's deputies to interview voters and other, uh, including Fuentes. So they checked the inside, you know, because the ones that she filled out, they, they checked 50 of them and her, she wasn't wearing gloves. So she, her fingerprints were on less than... Uh, you know, were inconclusive or that less than 50 of them, whatever. Although Fuentes is charged only with actions that appear on the videotape and involve just a handful of ballots, investigators believe the effort went much further. Attorney General's Office Investigator William Cluth wrote in one report that there was some evidence suggesting Fuentes actively canvassed San Luis neighborhoods and collected ballots, in some cases, paying for them. Collecting ballots in the manner that's common to get out the vote tag. She, she paid for them. She was, there was no like secondary group. She was literally doing this herself. Paying for ballots has never been legal. Exactly. Bye. Go to jail. Who cares? There's no sign she or anyone else in Yuma County collected ballots in the general election. But investigators from the attorney general's office are still active in Yuma County. The Arizona Republic reported Tuesday that search warrants were served last month at a nonprofit in San Luis. The group's executive director of, uh, sorry, is chair of the Yuma County Board of Supervisors and said the warrant sought the cell phone of a San Luis councilwoman who may have been involved in illegal ballot collection. This is basically... The, they're trying to get her elected. This was to get this San Luis councilwoman elected. At a legislative hearing Tuesday, where cons election conspiracy theorists testified, the Yuma primary election case was, again, a highlight. It's all about corruption in San Luis and skewing a city council election. Like, <sighs> dude, this is so fucking lazy. Ah. Uh. Anyway, so but let's be abundantly clear. Uh, the first question, which is the biggest one, he just blows off as unimportant and says, yeah, there, there probably is a stack of, you know, Biden only votes that aren't suspicious at all. And the Democrats response was, well, it's I don't know which we have to think about these things. What, you know, we have to, you know, fi like figure out who to vote. Like, how would how would this fictional Biden voter vote the rest of the time like that. They don't want to do the work. So they're just like Biden and then just shoved it into the fucking pile. It's nonsense. Yeah. 80,000 people live in Yuma and <laughs> what? Like half a dozen ballots they know of and maybe 50 in total for a local city council primary. And they caught her right away as she was doing it. Ugh. It's just so gross. Oh, D'Souza. Oh, yes. Of course, Dinesh D'Souza has a uh, podcast. Debbie's the producer. Debbie, his wife, is the producer. You're watching Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide. I think I'm the only person who's live gone through the 2000 Mules documentary. Line by line. Lie by lie. And pointed out how desperately full of shit it is. And the only thing I think dumber than the premise, evidence, and conclusions of 2000 Mules is the fact that apparently Dennis Prager and Larry Elder became more gullible as the, as, as the hour went on or whatever the fuck while they were watching it. 
Uh, the fact that both of those guys are supposed to be like deep thinkers on the right, and both of them were like, wow, wow, wow. Like, come on. Invariably, though, this is just, uh, it's just like at this point, it's a bore. That's the amazing thing. Dude got, uh, for the record, uh, like and subscribe to the show. And if you can support, there's, look, there's a PayPal tip jar if you want to help out or if, you, if you're a regular cash app or um, Venmo user, you can support the show that way. You can super chat. You can, of course, um, like and subscribe. That helps immensely. Subscribing on, on Twitch helps us immensely as well. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime account, it doesn't cost you a dime. These are all ways you can support the show because this is what I do. This is, my, this is what I'm doing. This is it right now. This is what I do. This is how I get food in my face. And um, the reason I bring it up right now is because um, some, well, I was about to say some, but a multitude of pricks gave D Dinesh D'Souza millions of dollars for 2,000 mules to make that piece of shit. Millions. I'm not even. I'm asking for a, a cup of coffee every so often. I'm just saying. Good lord.